Hello and welcome back to another series of Diaries of Death. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the bonus seventh installment, seventh season of Diaries of Death. Uh, the reason for yet another season is that we couldn't fit all of the content and builds into the first six seasons. Bummer, I know, right? So to recap, season one we start with Hamza chosen of Dibella, an illusionary knight uh, that tried uh, to join the companions and successfully led them and has indeed uh, achieved his tier one milestone. We have seen in uh, season number two how Ron the Snake failed to uh, lead the Dark Brotherhood, got unfortunately killed uh, during an attempt of reclaiming the uh, mysterious uh, ghost blade. Then in season number three we had Hermetheus, the cleansing paladin, a vindicative uh, redeemer of good, who went toe to toe with Potima, an evil old necromancer who almost got revived. He successfully prevented that from happening. Season four featured Geoffrey Delors, our martial only ranger, who did uh, manage to combine all parts of Gondor's amulet, uh, which he is now wearing, as well as doing a couple of ranger-specific quests to give him some extra bows. Season number five featured Patrick the Monk, uh, which was our attempt for a very low-power, unarmored uh, build. Unarmored and unarmed is uh, what the build was in particular. Patrick it was a fun build and uh, joined the uh, civil war on the side of uh, the Imperium but unfortunately didn't manage to fully complete it as he was challenging Ulfric, the uh, soon-to-be High King. He fell prone to his power attack and died in the throne room in a pretty epic battle actually. And finally we saw Isaac the Reborn, a mage uh, who apparently had died and came back to life. It was the first full mage playthrough, uh, no, begin, uh, beginning attempt uh, of showing you a full mage playthrough. And Isaac was trying to get the Elder Scrolls back, which he actually successfully has done at the very end. Uh, so he also is still alive. You can see a few died, uh, a few are still alive, so such is the way of permadeath runs. And I figured we still, uh, amongst the candidates, we have two heavy armor characters, one character without armor, and we have one character with uh, light armor, and we haven't really seen any uh, martial character that uh, picked up either the Thieves Guild or uh, finished the Dark Brotherhood. And since Isaac was not allowed due to his uh, blessing restrictions to join the Thieves Guild, I figured we want to see a Thieves Guild playthrough. So a Thief is what I will be creating. To go with yet another naming convention, we had everything from the Middle East over the United States uh, to Old Greek, French, um, Scottish, as, as well as Hebraic. Uh, I figured now it's time for a Spanish name. Carlos de Silver is what we're going to play. A Dagger Stealth Assassin, uh, who is going to join the Thieves Guild and actually tries to make up the ranks in the Thieves Guild. The aim of this run, as always, is going to reach like one uh, destined milestone, uh, which for us would be finishing the entire Thieves Guild uh, run. And that would constitute success for Carlos. We are going to directly join them, so I'll talk a little bit more about that once we're in game. Without further ado, let's jump right into it and get going. Carlos never thought that he would end up here. Here amongst all places where it is very, very cold. Carlos doesn't like the cold. Carlos thinks should have done a little bit smarter decisioning. Maybe it was the moon sugar, maybe it was the trading ring, a scheme ring. Whatever it was, 
It brought Carlos into a lot of trouble. And so he was on the run. He ran and ran until his pursuers no longer had the stamina to follow him. When he finally turned around, he found himself in a strange city, one that they called Riften. The local humans seemed to be friendly, and soon he got their trust. He also understood that more businessmen live in the city. Businessmen that could help Carlos uh, to earn a couple of coin. Since he was broke, he decided to go into the scheme and start his career anew. And so, and so begins Skyrim Requiem 3BF Tweaks. My name is Saiken, and today we're doing yet another permadeath run. It's the quote unquote bonus season with Carlos de Silva, our Kajit, who is uh, joining us today with yet a new start of Alternate uh, Lives. I am trying to showcase as many of the starts as possible. This time we're going with the recently joined the guild start. As you can see, we're with a Thieves Guild here in Riften. Let's talk a bit about the build before we uh, before we get going and talk a bit about what we're actually starting with. So we have a solid leather equipment, not bad, not good, somewhere kind of in between 340 armor rating at least will give us some sort of protection. All we got is a steel dagger and that is already a herald of what's going to come because we are playing a build that heavily relies on the stealth mechanic and backstabbing. Now for those of you unaware with uh, Requiem, stealth has massively been nerfed and is now to, yeah, came to a point where no more hiding in plain sight and no more just sneaking without ever being seen. So the idea of this build is to use the little stealth that is left and simply try to make ends, uh, meets and meets with uh, what we do have available. What are we going to do with the build? Let's uh, do the typical uh, core elements. We're starting with the birth sign first. I figured the build itself will be one hand and dexterity for the daggers. Definitely stealth because that's the name of the game. He's a thief, so we're going to have the supporting skill of potentially alchemy and some lock picking, just kind of to get by. Maybe a little bit of speech as a side skill. But we also got some magicka to work with. And since the whole backstabbing uh, is even better when uh, they, uh, when you backstab a target that is asleep, I thought, how about we're specking into illusion? And really. What I want to do is not so much the side of illusion that we've seen with Hamza Chosen of the Bella, which is mainly ki kind of crowd control and all of the duplicates. I'm thinking more about muffle and silence and um, a little bit, may maybe a little bit sleep magic, but that's pretty much it. It's really just staying under the radar um, and using our dagger as a deadly weapon. Maybe one or two perks if we have something spare in uh, in Marksman so that we just can shoot from afar and apply some poison. At the end he's a thief slash assassin. So that's really the idea of the build. And I figured I want to show yet another uh, standing stone. So this time we're going with the apprentice stone. The apprentice stone is an interesting one because it allows us uh, to do a couple of things. Number one. The Apprentice Stone quickly regenerates Magicka 70% more uh, quickly, which alleviates the requirement of any like mage gear. Uh, you more or less get your Magicka back whenever needed. In addition, Apprentices can learn new spells more easily, casting spells uh, for half as much as anyone. So that means 50% uh, spell cost reduction on everything flat which is huge because it will allow us to not skill magicka but still have a few spells at our disposal. They, it is more difficult for them to master spells. Our spells are a quarter less effective, so minus 25% effectiveness. Now, granted, 
That's not perfect for illusion spells that require direct enemy interaction, such as um, the sleep line, uh, the rage line, and the fear line. But it is actually quite effective for the ones that are indirect. Uh, the illusion, for instance, blur, like all of the uh, different buffs, invisibility, uh, muffle, all of those are still almost as effective. Muffle uh, would be, I think, affected by the 25%, but the rest would not. So it effectively for us is an easy way of getting spell access. We could alternatively use the Thief's uh, mm, uh, Stone or the Warrior Stone, but that is too close to other uh, builds that we have had, so we want this to be our birth sign. Then, secondly, choose the blessing, and here we go with a really interesting one. Last time we were again in the Nine Divines. Personally, maybe it's my character, but I, I tend to like uh, playing good rather than evil, so we tend to end up not so much on the Daedra side. But uh, mm, since we're doing the Thief's Guild and a little bit of Dark Brotherhood, we need to um, allow for a... Uh, Daedra that is okay with us killing and I figured we're actually going with Buithian uh, which gives a couple of interesting benefits number one Buithian receives 15% more damage with daggers and increases the sneaking uh, ability so that in allows us to sneak even more effectively secondly Followers who dedicate themselves to Boethia uh, by backstabbing targets in stealth, so that requires them to be unaware of us, will eventually receive up to 100% uh, more muffle strength. So over time, I think it's 150 backstabs uh, on the highest uh, tier, you will get even more muffling, so no, no noises will happen at some point, allowing them to uh, move silently in all but the heaviest armors, not re relevant for us because we're going to be a light armor build. Champions of uh, Buithia deal 150% uh, damage with sneak attacks, plus 150, so 250% uh, sneak damage compared to normal sneak damage, affecting even dwarven con constructs and undeads. And I found that was quite uh, helpful because it circumvents some of the issues that I had with it. So everything, everyone is blessed except of vampires uh, and followers of bad Daedra. So yes, we want to follow that Daedra. And in order to unlock uh, the bonus of Buithian, I think we need to kill someone. Currently it already fortifies uh, daggers, but we definitely would need to do a bit more. So what are we going to do with our points? Uh, we, I mean, it's not a huge surprise here. Our main skills to kind of recap will be one-handed for daggers. It will be evasion for armor. Uh, it will be dexterity for daggers uh, as well. Actually not a main skill, but a uh, little, uh, little bit of a soft uh, skill to Im improve uh, the armor penetration. Um, then we would take illusion magic, so it's the fourth uh, skill, and we would dabble into a couple of others. Alchemy for poison would be nice. Lockpicking would be not too bad. Sneaking definitely would be good because that's what we're doing. Uh, so actually that is the fifth main, uh, main skill. And a little bit of marksman. I don't think that the build will be ultra heavy on perks, but we're going to see whether or not I was right during the gameplay. So, we are increasing one-handed uh, weapon damage. I won't go too deep into it yet. We're going to put agility up, and I want to get the dodge perk as soon as possible. As a Khajiit, uh, we can already sneak ev even without perking it. That's the only reason why I'm not perking it, elsewise that would be stupid. Uh, we will perk it, don't worry. Uh, we're not going to play without it. And finally, I want to start with some illusion magic. So we're going to go with novice illusion. And what I was uh, thinking here is that we already do have a pretty good uh, vision. Dark vision definitely would be uh, would be an advantage. But how about we're doing fear because that's not bad. 
Charming touch can be helpful to make uh, people our allies for a period of time. Lionheart only uh, helps uh, companions, so since we're very much working on our own, that wouldn't be the case. Uh, we could go for Dark Vision actually and uh, just use that in order to allow us to see in ultra darkness. So, not a solution. Uh, there is definitely an appetite to go for Apprentice Illusion uh, for many, many of the better skills. And then our side of the skill tree will be the right uh, one here, where we are... Oh no, that actually it wouldn't. No, these here are the crowd control spells. Our, uh, ours would be the left-hand side. There we go. Muffle. Rune of Dampening, uh, Visual Manipulation would include Invisibility and Dark Vision, so, and finally this one here, <coughs> the Veil of Silence, Invisibility Sphere, so it's potentially that side of the tree that we're more interested in. Illusion is an interesting category because the skill rank determines just how successful you are with Illusion. So that's that, uh, we have uh, the core of the character set up. Let's uh, start right into the adventure, I would say. Couldn't I ever see you again? Fantastic. So the way that this run will start is essentially the initial scheme uh, that uh, Bryn Jolf is doing has already been successful. That's apparently how uh, A Better Life is uh, managing it. Nothing that, uh, ma of major importance that we've missed here. But we're now officially joining, so getting here was easy. Reliable and headstrong? You're turning out to be quite the prize. So, now that I've whetted your appetite with our little scheme at the market, how about handling a few deadbeats for me? Deadbeats? What do they do? They owe our organization some serious coin, and they decided not to pay. I want you to explain to them the error of their ways. Sounds good. Who are they? Kirava, Percy Honeyhand, and Helga. Do this right, and I can promise you a permanent place in our organization. How did, did you want me to handle it? Honestly, the debt is secondary here. What's more important is that you get the message across that we aren't to be ignored. Mm -hmm. A word of warning, though. I don't want any of them killed. Bad for business. Consider it good. done. If you need any details on your marks, I'll be here. Now get going. Good. What I will do is I'll, I'll typically, uh, since the Thief Skill is our main storyline mission, I will uh, let those dialogues go through. And I'll skip most of the other dialogues for, say, side quest, uh, quests Job's to make it a bit more streamlined. Just like you said. For starters, we need something to eat to because know. our stamina regeneration is just absolutely awful. All of this here would be stealing. So I tell you what, we're jumping right into the action with uh, some combat. Yes, we haven't cleared out the sewers yet. It's a perfect opportunities to go, uh, opportunity to go into the Redway. Well, apparently, the game has already killed all of uh, these guys here. That is unfortunate. There's our food. Better than nothing. And we got a healing poultress. That is also better than nothing. Cool. Careful with the trap up there. Oh, the dagger is really short in its range, but reasonably quick. Good, we got ourselves a ring. 50% stamina, holy this. 
it seems that this run here might be blessed and 20 additional unarmed strike damage is not good enough uh, to give up armor because we're not going unarmored can't really sneak at that rat Come on, Skeever. Funny enough, as a Kaji, we even do have a an unarmored attack, an unarmed attack. That is, so. We could theoretically go un, uh, unarmed. Hide armor is not an upgrade. And the beauty of early game archers. Luckily we were at full health. One shot almost got us down. F okay, so... <laughs> okay. Ebony's arrow of shock. I, was, I wasn't I was even sure that anyone could sp uh, spawn with these bad boys. Let alone in the first dungeon. Like that said, I got hit by ebony arrows. And... Okay, that explains a lot. We were incredibly lucky that... Uh, we even survived that. An elven bow is pretty damn good, and ebony arrows just is a phenomenal extra bit of damage. This is, in all of the runs that I did, by large and far, the single most dangerous um, archer that I've seen. And there are a lot of dangerous archers, but that was just beyond ridiculous. Holy tell you what ebony arrows uh, I'll take them any day of the week good some of food here aged cheese is good garlic can be used for uh, alchemical alchemical ingredients and I think we're pretty much okay let's heavy armor let's light armor Don't need any more alcohol. Fortify health, on the other hand, is a good potion. Holy, we got some really, really nasty arrows now. Let me get up to Riften and we're going to do the normal start. Tell you what, we're, we're doing uh, the quest now and then we're going to do a bit more of uh, the start. There is, are some more fights. So what I'm going to do, but not show on camera in all the extensity is, I will just harvest the entirety of Riften talked about that in many of the other runs. I'm a big fan of using alchemy as a starter uh, to get you really through the first few levels and some of the plants even without any alchemy perk uh, are usable for any of the races such as the mountain flowers for instance. So I'll do that and then we're going to do some brawls for the uh, Thieves Guild. Car uh, Carlos needs to take care of some business. If you're looking for a what is I have now? a message from Rino. I Rino. explained to him that you can't get blood from a stone. Ha! We'll see about that. Bring it on, wife. You call that a punch? Carlos calls that a punch. Come up for some long time. No? Yes? 
Oh, you hit me. Don't let him take that your best, huh? Here, take your damn coin and get out of here. One out of three. What do you so say, Bercy? Oh, You're not having the money. So well, that's not good. Father to show up himself anymore, eh? You demand payment. Don't fool yourself. I'm going to make you sorry for this. All right. I'm very curious to see how you want here. to do that. <laughs> By hitting thin air? Certainly not. Too slow, old man. Oh. Oh, I see. I see how it is. Please, no more. I'll pay. I'll pay. Uh, here. I can see you finally come to your senses. You're good. And for you, here for lizard a lady. Look, every. Take this. Every single coin I owe is there. I swear it. Very good. We got the message. Now just take your business. Back to Brynhall. Good. Before we deliver our little money we're actually going to do a few other things i need an amulet and there is a free amulet nearby which became a staple of most of my runs because it just so happens that it is free can't really argue with that value right it's also close to a city guards are nearby so typically you're not getting attacked All you need to do, uh, do is go down here, slightly to the right, and there is one wolf. Well, I think we can take that. Let's test our elf, uh, our bow for once, unperked. <laughs> Immediately kills him, and we even get our arrow back. All right. Can use that. And there is the amulet. There we go. So that's amulet and ring slot done immediately. Not a big believer in Seth Star, but the rest, uh, it should be better than nothing. 2% movement speed is good. This is what I've collected so far. I'll collect a little bit more and then uh, we are going to do the next step, which is uh, getting some quality armor. Time to hand in our quest and hopefully get an armor upgrade if we play the card our cards right. Bernhoff, old so, buddy. Job's done and you even brought the gold. Best of all, you did it clean. I like that. Dumping bodies and keeping the guards quiet can be expensive. Well done. And it would seem I owe you something in return. Here you go. I think you'll find these quite useful. What's next then? Judging from how well you've handled those shopkeepers, I'd say you've done more than simply prove yourself. We need people like you in our outfit. Is there more gold where I came from? That's the spin. I'm in. Larceny's in your blood. The telltale sign of a practice thief. I think you'll do more than just fit in around here. What's on your mind? Word uh, is your outfit isn't doing quite well, is that true? We've run into a rough patch lately, but it's nothing to be concerned about. Tell you what, you keep making us coin, and I'll worry about everything else. Fair enough? Fair enough. Now, if there are no more questions, how about following me and I'll show you what we're all about. All right. Or as uh, Carlos would say, it's all right. So as we're progressing into the Thieves Guild, I hope that we can get some of the loot. I'm pretty sure we can get uh, the Thieves Guild's outfit now, which will be a huge 
boost for our stats. It's a really good starter equipment and it makes a lot of the thieves uh, things much better such as pickpocketing and uh, lockpicking, sneaking, you know, S uh, thievy stuff. Maybe we can even get a bat here which would be fantastic. We most certainly can Oh yeah, get a couple of arrows. Cool. Lots of base equipment. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's do this dialogue real quick and then I need to take care of some other business. Mercer, this is the one I was talking about. Our new recruit. This better not be another waste of the guild's resources to bring me off. Before we continue, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. You play by the rules, you walk away rich. You break the rules and you lose your share. No debates, no discussions. What we say, when we say. Aye. Do I make myself clear? If by making yourself clear you mean that you are an unbearable asshole, then yes, Good. I understand. Then I think it's time we put your expertise to the test. Wait a moment. You're not talking about Golden Glow, are you? Even our little Vex couldn't get in. You claim this recruit possesses an aptitude for our line of work. So let him prove it. Golden Glow Estate is critically important to one of our largest clients. However, the owner has suddenly decided to take matters into his own hands and shut us out. He needs to be taught a lesson. Grignol will provide you with the details. Mercer, aren't you forgetting something? Hmm? Yes. Since Grignol assures me you'll be nothing but a benefit to us, then you're in. Welcome to the Thieves Guild. Welcome to the family, lad. I'm expecting you to make us a lot of coin, so don't disappoint me. Carlos never disappoints. Simple. Do as you're told and keep your blade clean. We can't turn a profit by killing. You should talk with Delvin, Mallory, and Vex. They know their way around this place, and they'll be able to kick some extra jobs your way. Oh, and talk to Tonelia in the flagon. She'll set you up with your new armor. Hey, I'm not done talking to you yet. Come back here. Golden Glow Estate is it? We need you to teach him a lesson by the cat that important client Mercer mentioned. Which I good. The last maybe the guild has a lot riding on this. Don't make me look foolish by mucking it up. They're built like small fortresses to resist the weather, but their one weakness is flame. Besides. Nothing tells them. I'll give you one. Burn all the hives, and she'd have to import honey for Blackbriar Meadery, which would cut into her profits. You watch your Fantastic. So, a couple of things. I will loot um, the main items that were after are over here. And I will loot that entire place because that's what we came here for. Thief skills armor, thief skills boots. Thief skills gloves and the hood, which overall is a nice upgrade. Armor increases carry capacity, dexterity skill goes up, lock picking is increased and we're haggling better. And all of that comes with a fashionate look, like the other thieves. Fantastic. I tell you what, we'll just sell all of that, because it's good money. No point in wasting it. We don't have the expertise to open these, but I will do some merchandise, uh, merchanting and then we're doing a small dungeon. Because there is still more for us to do before we do the next gig. 
Good, so a bit of preparation just so that you know what I did. Uh, for starters, we cooked some vegetable soup, got it almost all of the ingredients, looted everything downstairs, got a get out of jail uh, card with Blackbriar Reserve, which would be 100 points healthier uh, for a 600 second period. So that would be for situations where, where it's getting a bit closer. I figured out the advantages of Khajiits include also pickpocketing without perks. I didn't know that. They can sneak without perks. They have the strong stomach bonus and we got 10 armor penetration, 10 lockpicking expertise, faster movement and reduced fall damage. All of that is great, but it does not allow us to do any um, potions, which means for now, as, uh, as we go, I will use the normal ingredients. Uh, we're not creating any potions before we have perked into alchemy and what I would take is maybe two um, of the dragon tongue uh, just to get some resist fire as and when needed. We're going to use some lavender for resist magic. More importantly I would take the blue mountain flower for healing and the purple mountain flower for recuperation. These are the ones that we're going to use just straight off um, as they come. We got some soup. I looted a few poisons, which is helpful. So uh, taking that uh, burning poison right away. We will get more poison as we speak. Got some fortify health potions, a lot of uh, base healing, another healing poultress and a deficient uh, better potion of healing. So that's really it. Thief skills equipment, steel dagger. We'll keep the elven bow for now. I would say though that I'll put the frenzy oil on the bow. It's always fun to see when the enemies are starting to attack one another after they got hit uh, with an arrow uh, to the head. On top of that, by the way, I, I looked for bandits. So we got Broken Helm Hollow as uh, the bandit camp this time. So that will happen in a short bit. Let me just get uh, the rest here and uh, then I promised you a dungeon which is going to be the Red Ways as we haven't done uh, that completely. Good, time for the Red Way Vaults. I'm trying to cheese it by just uh, pulling everything to the Thieves Guild. Instead, let's sneak in as far as we can. have the stamina because we're not perked with bows. Alright, let's get this guy here. More of them are coming from below. One archer all the way down there. I think it's only three of uh, them. All right, the archer has no more ammunition, and we are running out of 
room to kite them. That's a better kiting spot. Try to evade the guy. But clearly wasn't able to do that. Good. We got dagger and shield now. Not very roguelike, but... What should we do? Don't need the longbow, we're good. But I would love to get that poison on. Waiting until the healing potion uh, ticks through. High bracers of viciousness. That's actually not bad. Not necessarily what we need. Certainly not bad. I think there is still one more enemy left. Besides, this is norm not normally how you should do uh, this dungeon. Okay, I think we've got them all. So now it's time to loot up and get the various items, including a quest item. The bow of a farmer which lives, uh, lives nearby. Let me take everything and then we're heading in the quest. It's good, here we are with Need Draven. Something. We That's found it. your bow. I don't know how you... Here, this is all I can afford to give you as compensation. For them, a good compensation, if you ask me. So, by the way, he's like right next at uh, the farm of uh, Riften. We looted an elven shield, which is great. It's the best light and uh, light uh, based evasion shield that we could ask for at the beginning. So, I'm actually quite happy with that. And we looted an armillet of LK. Not great, but 15 health is better than than nothing. Still got the elven bow, which is okay. It doesn't burn too much uh, stamina. And we got an iron uh, war axe of soul snares, which would be okay for killing, I suppose, and filling up uh, soul gems, which we currently don't need. So, not sure what I'm going to do with it. That's the loot so far. Okay, uh, I'm actually off to a pretty decent start. Now, next up, I think it would be fine to do Broken Helm Hollow first. I want to get that uh, evasion perk. And that would be a more or less natural ending of the first episode. So let's move there, do it, and maybe a small camp in between. And then we're ending the first episode. Before we go though, we were shopping in brackets uh, right here. Combination of actually buying a couple of uh, potions of healing, mostly the deficient uh, ones because we don't have a lot of money. And then stealing a lot of uh, poisons, some which are more helpful than others. 
the paralysis poison for instance is very very good uh, but yeah otherwise we got a few decent potions and that's pretty much about it off to our dungeon Good, time for our first really small bandit camping. Let's see if we can ambush these guys, potentially not. That was not the best way around. Good. Well, that was easy enough, thanks uh, to the wolves. Yeah, I got some decent uh, gear. Nothing to write home about. I don't know where his second companion is. One thing that I definitely learned is the dagger is not dealing a lot of uh, damage unless it's poison or rambushing someone. The Khajiit's innate ability to open locks, no offense. But it's not particularly great. Okay, I think there is still a second bandit here. Somewhere in the rain. was a wolf at the end of today. Cool, so first uh, bandit and a few wolves done. Time for us to get to our actual destination and get our first bounty. Okay, we're being greeted by a couple of bolts. I don't like that a lot. Where it's unfortunately too far away to bum rush both of them. Perfect opportunity for some fortify health because I don't want to be one shot. Alright, one down. I need more stamina. And some more obstacles in our way. Okay, both of them done. Slowly but surely regenerating that health. And there is still one more bandit to go. No, it's a full cave, so what I would want to do is repoison our weapon, thank you, and I'll just heal up and then we're giving it a go. Broken Helm Hollow, 
in all of its glory. Let's get the three bandits in here. Trying to sneak, but we're unperked. So the only thing that's helping us is us being a Khajiit. I heard an arrow shot. I think we just killed someone with heavy armor. All right, we did not kill anyone. Given that these guys are heavy armor users, I took the liberty of repoisoning the weapon. Can't afford to stay stand still. There's still an archer. Her power attack is slow, which is great. Doesn't mean that it is weak. Good. Fantastic. So, one more bandit. The archer, supposedly. Somewhere in the rain. In case you're wondering, no, they don't shoot worse just because it's raining. At least not from my experience. She's over there. Trying to find her in all of the undergrowth. Uh, growth. Trees are our support, life support. There we go. Close one. The problem with uh, bandits with daggers is they just are up in your face there is only so much you can do about it but on the upside i think we just secured us a solid upgrade with an elven dagger fantastic look at that Good, let's see what rest would uh, give us back. Healing Paltras into sleeping. Always a good combination to regain your entire health. It's a bit of a dark secret behind this wall. There we go, Life Nurse Corpse which we can report back to his family. Fire sparks, which will be incredibly helpful because we can use that for our next mission. And we got some po uh, poison of soul reaping. Not that it matters a lot, but at least we have a lot of poison at the moment. 
Lock picking, good. Remarkable healing potion. That is what I was looking for. Good. So. Let's see. We still can increase skills. And by the way, we got Night Eye. Nice. Cool. So, for starters, evasion goes up. Very good. 20 evasion is exactly what I was hoping for. A few more warrior skills one handed. Next, 25. And we're starting with a little bit more health. Uh, that's always helpful. And as so often with the Dodge, uh, the Dodge perk. Yep, much more mobile. It costs a lot of um, stamina, but well worth it. Good, I think that's it first episode so far so good and we are making an impact i'll trade everything in and next up i think we're continuing the thief's lines quest i would like to um, to skill into uh, stealth sooner than later to see if we can actually pull that off thank you for watching if you sneakily want to uh, steal a like on this uh, video and just uh, click the like button a fellow thief would appreciate that see you in the next episode and goodbye